Podcast here with Professor Miller and Yuli Sedejo. Welcome, Yuli. Hi. We have some very special guests here on campus today. We've been teasing with uh, our faithful listeners and readers over the past, let's say, three months that we've been working on an amazing project. Uh, Bill Gladstone is here to talk a little bit more about the video project that the Media Club has been working on for the last couple of months, and we're getting ready to present that here in the next few weeks. So we just wanted to sit and chat with Bill about how he got involved with Central Penn College and specifically about maybe more about how this uh, video project came to be. So Bill, welcome and thank you so much for taking time out to be here on the podcast today. You're welcome, Paul. Nice to meet you and nice to be here. And Yuli and also with me is Chuck Bender. Chuck is our group's uh, marketing director. Chuck and Bill, one of the first questions that I would like to ask you gentlemen is, how did you get involved with the Education Foundation? Because the Education Foundation is actually one of the members who uh, got us involved with you guys and got this whole video project together. So I'd just like to learn a little bit more about how you got involved in the Education Foundation. Involvement for me and my wife was based on the fact that I used to be a school teacher. And so I, I understand the value of education. Uh, very much so because I had people who I could not educate and I felt badly because I would see the difference when they grew up and compare them to people who had a college education, could go on and get a college education. So I decided that rather than take all our funds that we donated to charities, that we would go ahead and put it in one lump sum and we would donate it to a college. At that particular point in time I was actually doing real estate transactions with Central Penn uh, and so I thought, what a nice way to pay them back. So uh, we put together a program and we came up with an uh, idea of doing scholarships, came up with an idea of trying to get more involved with the school. Um, and then, unfortunately, as I found out later, you still get the calls from the charities, you still get the calls from the associations and the organizations that want your money. So. We continue to donate to, uh, to Central Penn, however, we still give it all the charities too. So it's a nice thing to do. We're, I'm glad we're in a position where we can do that, but uh, the part about donating to Central Penn so we can improve the quality of education, give students more opportunities, is very important to me. Well, and it's wonderful what is going on right now currently. You're offering some uh, prizes in the form of scholarships to some of our students. You're also um, prepared to make a, um, a very healthy donation to our media club, which we, we are an utmost thanks for that. Um, and we're looking forward to presenting these video projects here within the next couple of weeks. I guess maybe a, a follow-up question. I'm going to turn over to Yuli. Yuli, I, I would like, I was wondering if you could talk to um, the gentleman here about some more reasons why um, Central Penn is, is you know, a place for the Bill Gladstone group to, to donate some of their money. So my question is, why are you so passionate about helping our students at Central College? Because I do know that um, recently I just read a news like from Central Penn that you guys been really rewarding a lot of scholarship for students here that somehow I know of sometimes. Uh, thank you, Yuli. The, the idea here um, that we came about here was the fact that we, we wanted to choose a college. At first we really didn't know much about the schools. As we got to learn more about Central Penn, um, then we realized this was a college that we could, we could just kind of connect with. It wasn't high profile, it wasn't, you know, one of the, on the lower tier, looked like it gave a pretty good education to a, a good variety of students. The one thing, if I could take it just a step further, um, and just talk about the, the thing that's important to me and, and Chuck also because Chuck and I have worked together, is it 12? 12 years, yeah. yeah. I lose track, 12 years. <coughs> um, so the, the thing that's important is the creativity. And from the beginning when we started this, we saw the creativity here, didn't really understand it, didn't do a real big thing about it, just kind of let it go. But when we were sitting, when my wife and I were sitting and talking to one of the people who was interviewing for a scholarship that we sponsor, 
uh, there happened to be an image, uh, a little gift that we had given to Matt Lane. It was a bobblehead that we use, and we use that for branding, for marketing purposes. Well, the student I was talking to started talking about that. I started talking about that. She got creative. I got creative, and we came up with a whole new idea about, hey, let's have a contest. And that's how this all got started. But just to give you an idea, I mean, that all came out of a, a four-minute conversation with some student applying for a scholarship here at Central Penn. And so we connect well. We, I always remember that. It was a good experience. And we're looking at hopefully that's just the beginning of a lot of good experiences that we might be able to provide for students here at Central Penn. I thought that the whole thing was unique. Uh, and, and to give you a little spoiler for our listeners, what we are doing here is a video contest. with We have three different groups of students from our media club that are working on this. And it, it all focused around or has something to do with the bobblehead. And I think I'm a, actually quite a novice bobblehead collector in my own right. I think that it's extraordinarily unique how you use the bobblehead as branding for your business. I am really, and that's part of one of the, the allure of this project was that we had this to work with and that we were all trying to figure out different ways to focus the bobblehead as a major part of the, of the video project. So we're very much looking forward to uh, continuing to use that. I guess the, the next question is, you talked about how this, this came about from a four minute conversation. How did this opportunity with our media club specifically come to be? I, I know that you had spoken with Matt, but how did that next step occur where we were then brought into the fold? The next step actually occurred with Matt. After I finished talking with the young lady for her interview, I just kept thinking about, boy, that's a great idea. Let's try to do something with the bobblehead here at Central Penn. Sat down with Matt. Matt said, well, you know, um, maybe we could do something in the video, or maybe I brought that up, I don't remember. And we just kind of snowballed off of each other's ideas. And the next thing we knew, because I told him, I said, Matt, the one thing I really want to do once in my lifetime is I want to go viral. I'd like to be up there. I'd just like to go viral. Chuck's heard this all the time. That's, that, that's the goal he's working on. You know, whether realistically, whether it happens or not, we don't know. But we're getting closer and closer to making that a possibility when we do things like say, hey, let's get the whole school involved. And you and I have talked to that, about that, Paul, trying to get the whole school involved by starting first with the media club and then moving from there and getting that energy and moving through the school through social media. So we think it's a possibility, and I kind of like that idea. I, I like to think of myself as being creative, so Matt and I started talking about it, then we started talking about the money, and Matt liked the idea so much that he thought, well, the foundation can be part of this too. So all of a sudden, there's a lot of different beneficiaries to this whole thing, and I'm thinking, and, 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 and I won't make the money, but we're gonna get some creativity out of this, which, you know, if I had to do this, go through some of the companies here in town, um, it would be a lot more expensive for me to do that, and you know, quite frankly, we've done that before, and we really, when Chuck and I walked away from it, we kind of scratched our heads and said, you know, it's really not, it doesn't seem like it's really going to work. And we didn't really do that, but the, the dollars attached to that were huge. Here, the dollars are not huge. You guys are very humble in your approach. You like, you start from small beginnings, you move your way up, and we're, we're allowed to be part of that. And our, our, uh, the payback for me, for my group, for Chuck, would be that one of you guys, one of the teams that's here will allow us to go viral. Well, and that's one of the really awesome things, too, that we are trying to do. With the Media Club, I'll just give you a little bit of background about what we've done over probably the past year. We started, you want to talk about humble beginnings, we started with zero dollars, yes. okay? And as, as many clubs do. And we've worked diligently to do fundraisers and things like that to the point where, as I spoke with the gentleman earlier, we were able to purchase our own podcasting equipment. Mm -hmm. We look forward to be in a new podcast studio as well. And to be perfectly honest with you gentlemen, I, I can't thank you enough because your, even though in the grand scheme of things might not be the biggest donation ever, it means so much to our club and we're gonna be able to do so many different things with, the, with that uh, donation that you and the Education Foundation are making. Um, Yuli, I'd like to, uh, do you have any other questions for um, Bill? I think I'm not, but I do want to say that I'm pretty much grateful for the opportunities because we do learn a lot based on like how we create the video, how we do the podcasting and stuff like that because I came from a different background which is I really don't really know, but I do a little bit know. It stretches my like creativities and learn how to use the other stuff when we came to like 
an argument how we're gonna do this and stuff like that with the teamwork and everything else because it's really building a teamwork team to creating this pro video project and then we also learned that you know how to use the facilities department in here to use it for our for students opportunity to use it because we usually probably students don't really come <coughs> here to use this room to podcasting and stuff like that. And the interesting thing too, Yuli, is uh, behind the scenes, all the different things going on, whether it's uh, working with marketing and using some mm -hmm. of the equipment that they have, whether it's working with the faculty support center and being able to do the podcast here, use the green screen, which yes. I'll show you gentlemen here in just a few minutes. Even uh, reaching out to one of our club members who had had some editing experience, um, just, you know, and you leave what you said about the teamwork, all of our groups are working in pairs or in groups of three. So I think that's another thing that this could go on resumes, this could go on a LinkedIn profile. Regardless, win, lose, or draw, this is a, a huge opportunity for our students to get some really awesome teamwork experience to get some experience with local businesses in the area, mm -hmm. networking, I mean, there's yes. just so many different things that this project has enabled us to do. And that's why, again, we are, we are extraordinarily thankful for your time and frankly, your generosity here for the Media Club, especially since we are one of the newer clubs on campus. Yes. Uh, well, gentlemen, I, I think we'll, uh, we'll end there. We have uh, a very brief time with you here on campus, so uh, we'll, uh, for, uh, for Yuli, for Chuck Bender, for Bill Gladstone, from the NAICIR Bill Gladstone Group, we will catch you next time, and you'll hear much more about when our presentation is going to be. And so you can all be involved. Uh, that will accompany the story along with this podcast. So please be sure to check out the story as well for further information. So thank you, gentlemen, very much for stopping by today. And we'll, we'd love to have you back on the podcast again sometime soon. Thank you. This is Dr. Karen Scoforo for the Nightly News Podcast, and here's my leadership tip. At the end of the day, be done with it. Most mistakes can be corrected. Learn from the day's actions and start fresh tomorrow with a high spirit and serenity. the nightly news podcast we are very fortunate today to have sarah blumenshine here with us to talk about the alumni feast and brews tent that's going to be a part of our wonderful fall harvest sarah welcome this is your first time on the podcast it is thank you so much for having me you're absolutely welcome norm geary is also joining us the vice president of the nightly news welcome norm welcome everyone and Norm, I, I want to start off by saying one of the main reasons that you're part of this podcast is this has been your beat, basically, since we started the Nightly News. Any of the alumni-related stories that come along with uh, what we do here certainly have been right up your alley, so I thought that this was a perfect opportunity for you to share some of that. Not to mention, you're pretty close to being alumni yourself. Thank you very much, Professor Miller. I'm really happy that Sarah included us on the second event, which is our Fall Harvest Brews Tent and some of the other events that will be discussed in this podcast. So I want to say thank you for welcoming to the group. Well, I do want to start off with just a little bit of a recap about what's going on here on October 22nd. Uh, it is our fall harvest, and this is something that fall harvest we've been doing for a long period of time. So I was wondering uh, if you could talk about maybe some of your interactions with fall harvest previous to the alumni aspect of it. Sure. Oh gosh, I have worked at Central Penn since 2008. So I've been to every single far, Fall Harvest event um, since I started and it's it began years before that. I'm pretty sure in the 70s. It could be the early 80s, but um, it's a fantastic event. We always get hundreds of community members and vendors lining up the quad, food, fun, basket raffles, face painting, caramel apples, it's, it's a great time. And the best thing, in my personal opinion, certainly about recently about Fall Harvest, is the events that are going on in the Capitol Blue Cross Theater. I know this year there is a huge lineup of all kinds of different things, from children's plays to the ballet, to all kinds of different things that are going on here at uh, Central Penn for Fall Harvest. But one of the most interesting things that I always make sure to point out 
in uh, some of my classes that I teach is that this is really a way for Central Penn College to invite people in from the community. And speaking from somebody who has worked in public relations for a very, very long time, Sarah, can you explain about the importance of inviting the community into our campus on an event such as this? Sure, it's, it's just so important because events like this serve as a window looking into Central Penn. So it gives community members a chance to attend, to see what Central Penn is like, to experience what um, campus, what the feel is on campus, to see students, to interact with students. And, and I think that it's just a really important event that we hold. And as long as we get some nice weather, which we've had the past few years, it usually turns out to be an unbelievably successful event. Oh, fingers crossed. And hopefully, I mean, we've done it inside before. Well, let's hope it doesn't. And it worked out. <laughs> let's hope it doesn't come to that because uh, I know the last couple of years that I've been there, too, we, we've been very fortunate as far as weather goes. But really why we're here is you've since recently become the Alumni Engagement Director here at the school. Uh, the first time such a position has been uh, a part of what we are doing here at Central Penn College. And one of the first initiatives that you had here was to do something for the alumni at our Fall, Car fall Harvest slash homecoming, which is now our, our homecoming. Um, can you explain a little bit more about this uh, alumni feast and brews tent that debuted last year at Fall Harvest? Sure, and you touched on the word homecoming. That was one of the first things that I wanted to implement whenever I started the alumni office. We've always called our annual event our Family Fall Harvest Festival, and so I went through the appropriate channels to work with marketing and the president's office to officially rename it Homecoming. And then underneath Homecoming, we're able to hold the festival, we're able to hold our Alumni Feast and Brews reunion tent, we're able to hold our athletics events that we hope will continue to grow and grow as we um, build our fan base. But basically so that we can have this Homecoming umbrella event that we can add more and more to every single year. And the Alumni Feast and Brews reunion tent is really, I mean, it, that's what it is. It's bringing back alumni to eat, to celebrate, to reflect on good times, to reconnect with one another, to reconnect with faculty and staff members, and, and also to see how they can get more involved with Central Penn, whether that's signing up for the New York City bus trip or signing up to become an alumni mentor. And I know that that's something that we'd spoken about uh, at our pre-show meeting is about how you are implementing this alumni mentor initiative. And we hope to have you back in the near future to talk a little bit more about that as well. Certainly. Well, Sarah, <clears throat> glad you mentioned about the uh, homecoming as well. Um, why don't you tell us who all will be invited? Okay, well, we roll out the red carpet for our alumni. They are obviously invited with their families and we also invite faculty and staff and their families and this is a private event specifically for alumni faculty and staff and also retired faculty can come back so that they can interact with their former students one of the interesting questions that I had is I know that one of our core principles here at the college is the fact that we do have a dry campus, a drug and alcohol free environment. And frankly, I've heard from a lot of parents uh, that I've spoken with on uh, visitations if I run into them occasionally. That's honestly one of the reasons that um, many of the parents, you know, choose Central Penn for, with their, you know, children as far as a place to come. Did you receive any kind of uh, pushback at all or, or any kind of, uh, you know, what was the scene when you first proposed this alumni feast in Bruce Tents? Because obviously there's going to be wine and beer. Did you have any pushback from anybody here on campus or was it more of an embracing type of thing? Let's, you know, let's take the next step in, in what we're offering our alumni here on campus. It was definitely more embracing. I had to do a lot of research to get to that point. I went and I visited when I um, first started in the role as alumni engagement director. I visited with several local colleges and universities and I asked them about their homecoming celebrations and what works for them, what doesn't. And York College, Elizabethtown College, I really modeled this event after theirs, after their homecoming event. Um, which includes a tent and which includes food and alcohol. And they also have um, dry campuses. 
and how they model their event is you can only have alcohol during certain events, certain alumni events and certain community events. Otherwise, it's still a dry campus. And so that's what we do. And the event I should have mentioned is not open to current students. And we police that very heavily the day of, <laughs> just to make sure. It, regardless of if they're of age or not. Correct. The only students that are allowed it within the tent are the Student Alumni Association Club volunteers. And they have um, their Student Alumni Association t-shirts so that we know who they are. And also there are wristbands um, that identify who is able to consume the beer and the wine. Speaking from last year, you know, we I, I did get to stop by because we were covering it for the nightly news, which we of course again will this this year as well. But one of the interesting things that I noted was how amazing it was for some of the students who hadn't seen each other, former students of course, mm -hmm. that hadn't seen each other for quite some time to get back on campus. I actually even remember running into somebody who was, they had graduated, I don't remember exactly the year, but they had graduated in the early 70s and hadn't been back to campus since then. Uh, and I'd, I'd it was just so amazing to see the looks on their faces when they see what Central Penn has become. It's really quite, as a faculty member, it is really quite interesting to me to, to see those types of things. But also, Sarah, isn't this a, sort of a networking event for them as well, in a way, if you think about it? I mean, sure, they they might be enjoying a beverage, but at the same time, they might be able to find some other former alumni who are in the similar field as they. It is. It's just as much as it's a social event where, like you mentioned, um, friends are reconnecting after several years um, for some. Um, I mean, there's lots of hugs and um, so many great conversations that take place. In addition to that, yeah, definitely you can network. Um, something that I've added this year is there's going to be a spot where you can drop your business card if you want to connect with somebody at a later point. Uh, there's going to be a sign-in table where graduates can learn more about the specifics of our networking programs. And also, I'd like to mention that a lot of graduates brought their families last year into the tent. This, this tent is not what you would imagine at a typical brew fest where it's solely adults going from table to table experiencing different wines and, and beer. It's a huge event that includes big white tents, a uh, homecoming banner, there's a little night's kids area with several different games that kids can play, there's yard games um, like cornhole, ladder golf, um, can jam, there's the live entertainment which is which is really amazing because we have graduates coming back and volunteering their time to play for us. So we have Jason Barshinger, 2003 alumnus. He um, plays acoustic guitar, so he has a set. And then we have our 2012 alumnus, Brett Rutter, and his band, The Gregories, is going to be playing, and they do a lot of soft rock. And so there's just something for everyone during the day. I, I just love how you've coordinated this to be so inclusive of alumni because I think that's one thing that before you came into this this position that we just didn't really see a whole lot of. There was definitely alumni events, but not so much inviting them back to campus to see how much we've grown. And I just think that over the last couple of years that that has made just a huge impact uh, in just a short period of time. Um, the last question that I have, and then I'm going to turn it over to Norm for some of the specifics is, uh, one of the sp things that I saw was that you've got a couple of breweries coming in that are specifically alumni owned and operated. Uh, one of them I know is the Brewery of Hershey. One of them I also know is Zero Day. Uh, Trogues will also be there as well as Pizza Boy. Can you talk about how you reached out to these organizations, to these breweries, to invite them specifically and, and hopefully they realize how important that this is to be involved with something like this. Sure, I mean I can't tell you how much we appreciate our alumni um, sponsors because that's what they are. When I reached out to them last year, Spyglass Ridge Winery also participated last year. When I reached out to them, I didn't really know what to expect because I was asking basically for sponsorship for product donation um, for discounts on products and the response was overwhelming and they, they really just want to help out their alma mater. They want to spread the word about their businesses and organizations with our alumni base and I think that everyone is going to be very pleased with the products that we have this year. We changed things up a little bit so we have 
a strawberry IPA from Hershey Vineyard and Brewery and uh, peanut butter cider and the Trogues is doing their Troganator and also a pumpkin and there's just all kinds of different brands and flavors that you can try this year. Well and certainly the fact that uh alumni see that other alumni are running these businesses maybe they're more inclined to go to those businesses or you know frequent those businesses because of the relationship with Central Penn College so I think that's fantastic. I think so and you know something that we talk a lot about in Alumni Council um, Alumni Council for those of you who don't know is the governing body of our Alumni Association but we talk a lot about you know how can alumni who have businesses, who have organizations, how can they spread the word? And that's something that we're working on, so stay tuned. Um, definitely one way that you can do that is through our private LinkedIn group for alumni, so check that out. <laughs> awesome, and you know, you'll never meet a larger proponent of LinkedIn than myself, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, Norm, let's uh, wrap up with some of the more specifics of the Alumni Feast in Brews Tent. Okay, so who do you have coming to this event so far? Well, we have graduates who have signed up from 1966 to 2016, and they're still rolling in every day. We have one more week until we close the registration, so people can get tickets until October 14th, and they can do that online at centralpenn.edu slash alumni feast. And we're expecting about 200 folks to come this year. I certainly will be interested in, in coming by and, and just for covering for the media club, of course. Well, in conclusion, Sarah, you really brought up some very good points. I want to say thank you very much for allowing the Central Penn Media Club to be firsthand on the knowledge of the uh, Fall Harvest Homecoming Alumni Brews Tent event. Uh, you covered some real good points, especially about how important it is for alumni to be a part of this event all the hard work that you're doing to get the alumni in and how easy it is to get tickets by going to the venue that you just mentioned. And uh, in conclusion, are there any areas that Professor Miller or I did not cover that you may want to cover about the concluding comments on the event as far as getting people to come on board and assist, volunteer, and help? Thank you, Norm. I'm glad that you brought that up because if somebody does want to volunteer, if they want to help with registration, if they want to help sell alumni merchandise, if they want to help coordinate group photos, they can certainly get in touch with me. And my email address is alum, A-L-U-M, at centralpen.edu. And finally, I would have to say that if you're planning to come out, um, please check out the Fall Harvest schedule of events too, because this is easily an event where you can spend all day on campus. You can come with Fall Harvest starting at 10 o'clock, and the alumni tent opens at 1 o'clock. So bring your families and, and get your friends together and come on out. Well, Sarah, certainly we appreciate you stopping by and talking a little bit more with us about the Alumni Feast in Brews Tent. That's going to happen all as part of Fall Harvest on October the 22nd. Fall Harvest is going to run from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. There's going to be things going on in the theater, vendors, all kinds of tours uh, for the alumni during that time. Full schedule of Fall Harvest is easily available online at centralpen.edu. And then, of course, from 1 to 4, we'll have the Alumni Feast and Brews Tent uh, that will feature uh, Trogues, Pizza Boys, Zero Day, Brewery of Hershey, and others. And wonderful Oktoberfest fair. A chance for you to network with some former alumni and also maybe reconnect with some alumni that maybe you haven't seen for quite some time. So uh, certainly one of the premier events that we hold here at Central Penn College. Well, Sarah, thank you so very much for taking time out of your day, and we certainly hope to have you back as a regular guest in the future. Thank you. Looking forward to it. Well, you're very welcome. Okay, everyone, for Vice President of the Nightly News, Norman Geary, for Director of Alumni Engagement, Sarah Blumenshine, I'm Professor Paul Miller, and we'll get you next time on the Nightly News Podcast. Mm -hmm.